so I am going to be switching to soft spoken and we are going to do another episode of Am I the A-hole? Dun 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 So, let me pull up the subreddit and let's find some juicy ones So Let's... Ooh, I think we got a good one. So, question. Am I the ale for kissing my wife's sister on the cheek and forehead? Dun, dun, dun. I just finished doing one of these on Patreon and I had a lot of fun so I figured let's do one here and it has been requested but hey if you like these I usually do these on Patreon just saying okay am I the whole for kissing my wife's sister on the cheek and forehead innocent enough innocent enough my male 39 my wife i don't know why it's in my i'm guessing me me and when we read these sometimes the typos are just not not good me male 39 my wife sarah female 39 and sister-in-law Emily, female, 20, oh, she's quite young, have been through so many ups and downs together. Mm. The title is horrible, but hopefully it's one of those, this sounded bad, but not anymore. So hear me out. The way that they prefaced this, I don't know, weird. Sarah and I met in high school, immediately fell in love, and got married as soon as we were both illegally able to do so. I had been emancipated at 16 due to both my parents passing in a crash. That's sad and I fully support and provide more than enough for the both of us. Sarah's mom was a single mom who had Emily when Sarah was 19 and heartbreakingly their mom passed away during their childbirth. Long story short, in 2004, Sarah and I became the legal guardians of Emily. We raised her as if she was our own, all while being open and honest with her about our unique family ever since she could grasp the concepts. We consoled all the nightmares, traveled as a family, changed the diapers, cooked her meals, took her to sports, to piano, attended the parent-teacher conferences, all the parent stuff, etc. Emily was recently accepted to her dream university, so as her proud father figure, I hugged her and gave her a kiss on her forehead, something I and Sarah have done since she was little. Here's where the am I the a-hole comes in. Emily's boyfriend, let's say his name is John, was at her home to celebrate them both getting accepted. Sarah and I are pretty familiar with him. John immediately gets upset with my hug and forehead peck and approaches me 
and Emily in a protective boyfriend way. John starts drilling into me about how men don't kiss anyone but their moms slash wives. And I was acting disrespectful to him, Emily and Sarah, by kissing a girl that's not my wife, a brand new adult, and in front of him, Emily's boyfriend. I tried to de-escalate his anger by reminding him that Emily and I have always had a parent, if not at least a sibling, dynamic, and my wife mentioned that we both often show our affection through consensual hugs and kisses. John kept saying, I'm a disgusting creep, and accused me of being attracted to young girls since Sarah was 17 years old when we met, but so was I. We are still happily married and going strong. John left the celebration early and relayed everything to his parents. They have threatened to report me for my inappropriate relationship with Emily and broke up the couple. His parents continue to berate me on social media by calling me a groomer. Emily is not mad at me, but of course is feeling sad about the end of the relationship. She has mentioned that his behavior that day opened her eyes and about how demanding and insecure he acts. She definitely, she definitely dodged a bullet. She definitely dodged a bullet. I know that if any cramp tries to hit the fan with John's parents and the police, it can't because we have all the proof and documents to show how me and Sarah were her legal guardians and are her immediate family. I am simply wondering if it's normal behavior for a father figure to peck and hug their children or if I'm crazy. He even did an edit. Kisses have never been on lips or anywhere sexual. Okay. So, um, peck on the forehead and a hug and he gets that crazy, that in your face. That is a huge red flag. A huge red flag. And I think it's perfectly normal. Yes, if it's consensual to, as a, a parental figure, to give hugs, pecks on the forehead, peck on the cheek, um, I know, you know, I go in for a hug, kiss on the cheek with my brothers. Like, you know, I do the same thing with my dad. Hug, kiss. So, I think if Emily doesn't have a problem with it, then he shouldn't have a problem with it. And I just think he has issues. Like, that was just with you, who, in Emily's eyes, you're her parental figure. So I can only imagine if someone else gave her a kiss, a peck on the forehead, kiss on the cheek, he would probably break someone's neck or something. You know what I mean? Like, he would probably get violent. So. I don't think you did anything wrong. Um, I think that he has issues, really. Okay, let's see. Not the a-hole. You sound like a normal, loving, affectionate father figure. I'm not sure why Emily's boyfriend would try to sexualize every touch. 
much. He sounds like he has a lot of problems to work out. I hope you can support Emily and she can find a partner worthy of her. Possibly someone who would think it's not a sexual thing to kiss his own kids in the future. Yeah, I see where he's going there. You know what I mean? Like, when he has kids, is is he going to think that that is wrong? I think that he has some sort of skewed view of the world. And a lot of times it has to do with the person's past traumas that he hasn't uh, fixed. You know what I mean? Um, maybe he has dealt with some awful things and now like the, the way he, he thinks is just not normal, you know? But number one, he's highly controlling. So he, no, he, he needs to fix his problems. Um, let's see. Not the a-hole, my dad hugged me every time I visited and that moment would have definitely been a hugging one. And from what I have read, you're her dad. You raised her, you love her, that's a normal dad thing to do. That's normal dad stuff. Glad she broke up with John. I hope you and your wife are proud of yourself too because to be suddenly responsible for raising a child at 19 all while mourning the loss of a mother and mother-in-law is one hell of an accomplishment. Agreed, agreed, agreed. So, that is that. And, I mean, they were celebrating, you know, at the same time. Like, they were celebrating. It was a happy moment. And some doofus has to ruin it for everybody. Okay, so next. Am I the a-hole for blowing up on my husband's friend after her wife died? Well, let's read. Okay, here we go. My husband, Ian, 44 male, is close friends with a woman named Jenna. They've been friends for a long time before Ian and I got together. So I know her fairly well too, but we really have nothing in common and we're not exactly friends. Jenna's wife, Laura, very sadly and somewhat suddenly passed in early March. She was terminally ill, but responded to treatment very well and was expected to survive another two to five years. She's been leaning on Ian heavily for support, which I understand, but she's been at her house every single day since, and even sleeping in her guest room most nights because she doesn't want to be home alone which would be okay, except she's getting more and more passive-aggressive towards me and weirdly territorial of Ian. I've reminded myself that I don't think I could stand to see a happy couple for months if I lost Ian and to be patient. It's not personal. My birthday was on Sunday. I got home Saturday after a morning out and Jenna was there. I was making small talk when I asked Ian what time he made dinner reservations for the next day. Jenna inserted herself right here and asked Ian if he was going to be out the next day and he said yes. She started panicking and saying that he couldn't and she wasn't ready to spend an evening alone. I was going to tell her that she could still hang out here while we're gone and she looked at me and said, don't you have any effing friends you can go with? No, 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 no. And I just blew the F up. Don't you? have 
any effing friends you can go bother and so on she called me selfish for monopolizing my husband and i had enough and told her to get the f out of my house and not to come back ever does she not realize she's not just in ian's home she's also in her home as well the disrespect truly Ian had been trying to calm things down between us, but it spiraled out of control fast, and he ended up escorting Jenna out and telling her that he'd come visit her in a few days, but he would be backing my decision because of how she spoke to me. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. At least, he's right in the head. I was happy for his support and still am, but it's been a few days and I just feel bad all around about it. I should have been more understanding of her, but I also feel like she should treat me more respectfully and I'm not really sure if I overreacted. Absolutely not, okay? Again, what was it that she said? She said, don't you have any effing friends you can go with? Um, I have my husband. <laughs> Did you forget? Did you forget? I, I feel like, and I truly feel for her. Obviously, she lost the love of her life, but I, I also feel like she is uh, manipulating the situation a bit, and... She's definitely seeing how far she could get and crossing some boundaries or maybe some boundaries needed to be made, but she definitely took advantage of the situation and I cannot stand people that take advantage no matter the circumstance. She took your niceness for granted. And, and that's what she had to tell you. Which means, I can only imagine what she thinks of you. Like, she doesn't like you. She doesn't like you. She doesn't respect you. Like, that just says everything. Is she really his friend, right? I don't, I don't know. Me no like you. Not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. She was so far out of line, and especially in your own home. I'd also sit down with your husband and talk about it. To me, personally, it really seems like she likes your husband. And I was going to say that, but I don't know her full-on history. But I feel like she definitely is trying to, like, get a hold of your husband. I don't know in what way, whether to remove you out of a situation just because she just generally wants him to herself um, and, and she needs him to like fill the void or maybe she has always had feelings for him. I don't know, but it's odd. It's weird. To me, personally, really seems like she likes your husband more than just a good friend. I understand that she had a wife, but maybe she's bi and hasn't been open with it. I don't know. Uh, not the evil. Jenna was out of line, but it is also good that you are reconsidering your actions. That speaks volumes about what an amazing person you are because I would have squashed that like I would have closed the chapter okay she's done she's done in my book <laughs> but you're just such a, a good person so 
this is a tough situation for everyone involved there are no simple good guys or bad guys here i was a young widow myself and those first few months were a blur the things that upset me then i can now see how i overreacted and took things personally that i should not have I was irrational at times and got super emotional over the slightest things. None of this gave me a pass to say or do anything to others. Same applies to Jenna. I'm glad your husband backed you. This is a good sign for your relationship. I would tell him how much you appreciate his support because it must have been hard for him to escort his good friend out when she is suffering. It was the right thing, but it was still probably hard for him to do. Talk to him about how he can support Jenna moving forward with better boundaries. Get agreement between the two of you or on how you both will interact with Jenna and support her. Eventually, Jenna will be in a better place and you may be able to reconcile to a certain degree for the sake of your husband. Really good advice. A really good advice. A lot of people are saying, wow, not the a-hole, nobody's talking to me like that in my own home, period. Yeah, that's just um, tough. Okay. Let's see. Am I the a-hole for snitching on my co-worker after they left me? I'm trying to get the juicy ones here. Okay. I, 23 female, recently worked a temp project at my job that required us to break into. Oh, okay. <laughs> the, uh, have several gaps in this. Okay, so back it up. Back it up. I recently worked a temp project at my job that required us to break into teams and work 12-hour shifts. Mine was 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. towards the end of the project. This is how he wrote this. <laughs> towards the end of the project, my partner was taking off for personal reasons and was replaced with someone else since this was towards the end the person who sat on shift with me had no responsibility and mostly their job was to sit at the station since it wasn't supposed to be unattended or answer the phone if i was already on the phone well the person who was put on shift with me showed up at 7 p.m and everything was fine at around 10 p.m., they say they're going to go grab dinner and ask if I wanted anything. I said no due to having already brought my food, and so they went and never came back. At around 1 a.m., I'm starting to worry, and I start calling and texting, and no answer. I try looking to see if maybe they were just chilling in another office. This person is nowhere to be found. At around 4.30 a.m., they finally answer and they say they were in the other office asleep. And I know that wasn't the case because I had checked there multiple times. What made me mad was that they actually started laughing. And they thought it was funny. On top of the lie of actually being there. I said I couldn't believe they just left and... They said they would come back, and I said the shift was almost over as it was close to 5.15, and the busy part was over. So, of course, of course they would come back. Though I still think they should have came back, and this person is one of my bosses, so I can't make the call to them not to come in or finish the shift. This is confusing. I get off the phone and I wait and they really never come back. I'm angry. I feel like this person is writing this like in real time as this is happening and they're writing angry. I 
you can tell when someone is writing angry. It doesn't make sense half the time in the way that they're writing this. Okay. So, every day of the temp project has been rough for the night shift, and one of the top supervisors for our team as a whole checks in on me every day after my shift. So, I told him what had happened, how the person left me on the shift after only doing three hours. My supervisor was angry, and even more so because he personally asked this person to sit on the shift with me so I can occasionally take a break or use the bathroom, but they just left. They literally just had to sit there and just be alive. <laughs> this person literally wrote that. So my supervisor gave him a suspension that would cut his pay. Important notes. The suspension will go in his work file and follow him throughout his time in this company. This suspension will potentially make it hard to get promoted in the future. This suspension, according to my supervisor, was a culmination of bad behavior, but this incident was the straw that broke the camel's back. Okay, that is to be noted, and that right there is giving not the ale because this person was already doing things against the policies of this company, so not the ale. This person did not apologize at all. The suspension is not in effect and my husband is friends with the guy and they are so buddy buddy. Okay. Due to my husband not wanting to add to the tension and hostility. What? See, again, confusing. Why is your husband now involved? And so th the suspension is not in effect. Everyone, including my husband, says I just shouldn't have spoken to him directly instead of telling the supervisor. Oh, everyone is saying that he should have just spoken to him directly instead of telling the supervisor. No. No. Because, again, you guys did have a conversation that day when you were wondering, um, are you coming back? And the person just laughed at you. Laughed at your expense, really. Apparently, the loss in pay will affect his, him next month when he has a child support hearing. He has two kids. Okay, so, am I the a-hole? No. I don't think you're the a-hole. <laughs> like, you were just doing your job. This person was not. And you spoke your truth, you know? Yeah. So, not the a-hole. He clearly didn't do his just. He left you there alone to do whatever he wants. The old saying always sounds true. He effed around and found out. Nothing you did wrong here. So, not the a-hole. First, the cause of this is the co-worker who decided to ditch you. You had no control of that. Second, you did try to speak to him directly. How many times would you have to try and get through to him? Third, this is just one of many issues he has caused, apparently. None of which were your doing, exactly. Fourth, what the heck is wrong with your husband that he thinks this guy's sleep, if that's what he was doing? is more important than your well-being. Have his head checked. <laughs> okay. Like I said, when they brought up their husband, I was like, Meh. what does that have to do with anything? Like, no. My thoughts exactly, not the you You were doing your job, he was not, he got got, end of story. Okay, like, if you don't want repercussions, like, don't, don't do what you're doing, you know? 
so simple. It's, it's so simple. Okay. This is fun. Okay, I have to read this one. This is such a silly one, but I have to read it because it literally makes me want to laugh out loud. This is what it says. It's not really a juicy one, but like, it's a funny one. Am I the a-hole for not letting my husband put a peloton in our sunroom? I can't. I can't. Okay, and this one has an update. So, for anyone who cares, he put the Peloton in the sunroom. It is not in the middle of the room as it was before. He did put it in the corner next to my Pilates equipment. I asked why he couldn't put it in his room and he said there was no room. I asked why he couldn't put it in the guest room, and he said he would, but we need to clear stuff out first. That weekend, I did a major clean out of the guest room, cleaning out things we didn't need, and rearranging to make room for the beloved Peloton. When I showed him the space for the bike, he said, but it's workout equipment. It should go with the workout stuff. I explained, pointing to his man cave, this is your space, and the portion of the sunroom is my space. I don't put my things in your space, and I would not like the bike in mine. He said, but you can use the Peloton. <laughs> now, I'm not going to use it. Okay, I don't like it, and the principle of it being in the spot I didn't want it to be in, when I definitely won't use it. Mm. Is it petty? Yes. Am I proud? Also, yes. <laughs> okay, to add... We recently got a new coffee table and we pushed the old one off to the side. I asked my husband to help me move it into the garage until we can find a way to dispose of it. He kept saying later and three weeks later, I decide I can, I can just do it myself. Kind of like you clean the entire room for him to fit his peloton. man. Okay. So, three weeks later, I decided I could do it myself. It was a bit large and heavy, but it's on wheels. So, easy peasy. I may or may not have lost control of the coffee table around a corner and may or may not have put a tiny hole in the wall. There is no hard evidence that it was me, and thus the incident remains alleged. Alleged. Oh my gosh, I love this woman. <laughs> Anyways, given the recent event, I am on a slight probationary period of moving large objects myself. Mm. So now, friends, I stare at the peloton in my space and debate if I A. try to move it myself, B. suck it up and leave it where it is, or C. set the house on fire, collect the insurance money, and never see the bike again. She, she, she literally said this. She literally said this. And for those who don't understand sarcasm, that was a joke. I'm obviously not going to leave it in the sunroom. Oink. Thank you to everyone who replied and became invested in my first world problem. It was very much appreciated. Is this post not golden chef's freaking kiss? <laughs> Oh my gosh. 
Um, I just think she's hilarious. Like, protect this woman at all costs. I think she's a hoot, and I'm pretty sure she makes this marriage fun. I'm pretty sure. She makes it interesting. She makes it interesting. Uh, I mean, I agree. You know, compromise. You want the Peloton. She does not want the Peloton. Put it in your man cave. Easy enough. And come on, do it. You do it. Don't have her do it. Okay? And she's already on probation, so... He should suck it up. He should suck it up, buttercup, and put the darn thing in the man cave. Just make you happy for once, you know? You deserve the sunroom as, as it is. Because apparently the Peloton is an atrocious dinosaur in your eyes. And, I mean, it's a useless piece of equipment for you, so. Okay. Oh, honey, the truly petty thing to do would be to move your Pilates equipment into the man cave. That is so funny. <laughs> Yes, his room is now your Pilates room. Enjoy. I take up sewing as a hobby and fill the man cave with frilly fabrics and colorful ribbons and organize nothing. Maybe purchase an antique sewing table that needs to be in the man cave because the Peloton is in the sunroom. Oh my gosh, I love how people are even more petty in the comments, even more hilarious, even more spicy, even more sarcastic. Like, I'm living for this. Miss it the first time, but dang, your husband is quite the a-hole, isn't he? Okay, this person said, let me catch you up. He has a whole room all to himself and decided that his exercise bike belongs in the tiny space his wife uses to exercise. The whole room is not exclusively for her either, just a portion of it, but his bike must go there because yes, he is an e-hole. Personally OP, I would move the bike outside on a very rainy day if possible. <laughs> Destroy it. Destroy the Peloton. Okay, let's see. Um, so, he did exactly what he wanted and can't even be bothered to help you do things he said he would? Is this really how you want to spend the rest of your life? <laughs> Not the a-hole. You could just tell him you want it moved. No excuses, and if he doesn't find a different place than the sunroom where you spend your time, you will have it moved. If it doesn't move, hire mo if he if he doesn't move it, hire movers to move it. Stop letting excuses stop you from removing his toys from your space. And then another person, another, you know, little update just in case you didn't get it. Because he actually has two rooms for his stuff. And she has the sunroom, which isn't exactly hers. Only it's a more public room in the house. But she doesn't want to see this ugly thing in a room she decorated for herself. Can she just get one thing? Can the girl just have one thing for herself, please? Please? Not the a-hole. That was just as good as- No, actually, actually, I take it back. That was even better. That was even better than what I thought. That was even better. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is probably a bit too much. Um, it says, Am I the a-hole for getting mad at a middle-aged man who walked into the public bathroom area of the gym butt naked? Butt naked. 
he did say middle-aged man right so he's not like an old man senile not you know with dementia or something okay i don't even know should i read this as soon as he walked in to wash his hands next to me smiling with his thing flopping around i said come on man put on a towel when you walk into the public area what if i brought my teenager here to work out today we got into a bit of a shouting match cursing and everything then i just called him a nasty mother and walked out while he was still yelling in there the locker room area is in a separate room in the bathroom and i don't know if they have showers or sinks in there but i don't want to see someone's junk when i go into the bathroom to wash my hands to use the restroom also i've been going to the gym for decades and this was the first time i ever saw someone naked in the bathroom um so not the evil i mean valid like public bathroom have some common decency um i don't know why you know this guy started fighting with you clearly he's off the wall clearly all right not the a-hole there are parts of the building where nudity is expected and he's not entitled to be that open with strangers who aren't consenting just washing your hands at the sink is not where frontal nudity is accepted in the U.S. at least. In the locker area, a little bit different, you know, a different point could be made. There are camps where he can let it all out and get what he needs to get out of that, basically. But the gym's not one of those places not the a-hole as there could have been minors in the room one wrong move and jim bro gets on the offender list and sent off to jail no one needs to see naked people when they are not expecting to see naked people so yeah not uh not the a-hole not the a-hole and uh let's read one more i guess um I can't help but chuckle when I read stories like this. In places like Germany and Sweden, this wouldn't even be an issue. Yeah, but it's an issue here. And it's it's valid. It's valid. Especially, uh, trust no one. We have more creepos than not, unfortunately. And sometimes people have to be put in their place. And just, you know, saying your piece and the reaction is that just says a whole lot about this person. A whole lot about this person. So, there you have it. And that is the end of this episode of Am I the Eel? I hope that you guys enjoyed. Um, maybe next time I'll do this again, whispered. But a lot of people said they wanted another one, soft spoken, without gum chewing. So that that is what I did today. That is what I did today. So thank you so much for spending time with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.